lived in St. Paul's writing, which is Michael Walker and Joe Mahavik's uh, wards, combined for 24 years. I am also the NDP candidate in the provincial election in St. Paul's. I'd like to first state the party's commitment in this election. The NDP and Howard Hampton are committed to pay 50% of operating costs beginning in January of 2008. In exchange, municipalities would be required to freeze fares for two years. We believe that sustainable, long-term funding is key to creating livable cities and allowing for you as commissioners to plan responsibly for the future. The NDP is the only party which has made this commitment to towards operating costs. Personally, I'm also here to say that the possible cuts to bus routes in St. Paul's are ill-advised, short-sighted, and unfair. There are a number of routes which have appeared in various lists and articles. The number 5 Avenue Road bus going downtown. The number 14 Glen Cairn bus, which goes to uh, Davisville. The number 33 Forest Hill bus. The Mount Pleasant bus as well as Bond Road and even Young Street. These are routes which students take to high school, especially at Mount Pleasant where they go to Northern Secondary and North Toronto schools. Workers go downtown. And to cut off the west end of Bond Road near Dufferin and Eglinton is unfair and frankly a slap in the face to those in our community who are less advantaged and who need transit for then many. As far as the number 33 for his school bus is concerned, I met students the other day at the St. Clair West subway station transferring to Forest Hill Middle School and then on of course at Edmonton Avenue to uh, Forest Hill High School. And what about the domestic workers who need that 33 bus to go to work and back every day to eliminate those types of routes would add hours to their working day and make their lives much more difficult. As far as price increases are concerned, the other day an acquaintance of mine was basically bragging that he drove the five kilometers from his home in North Toronto to his workplace. He said for the seven dollars extra cost him to park over the TTC fare, he was prepared to pay that price. Rather than making the TTC more expensive or reducing service, to those who need it, such as students, seniors, and the poor. Why not make it, and this may be outside the TTC's jurisdiction, you may have to go to your colleagues at the budget committee, but why not make it more expensive for drivers to parking or a toll system if that is the route to go? That would mean that we would have cleaner air and more transit, not less. It is time to build the transit and not dismantle it. As far as the province is concerned, we, as I stated in the party, and Howard Hampton, are in favor of provincial support for public transit. We have, in my website for the campaign, specifically adopted some of the expansion plans of the GPC, including the important Edlington line, which would extend from Scarborough, according to the GPC's own plan, to the airport. That's a sensible solution. We all know that downloading has to be reversed. We all know that, as Mr. Webster said, we need long-term sustainable funding to support a transit solution. With the support of city councillors, electing more Democrat MPPs in this election will help solve not only the city's financial crisis, but the transit issues that you've been debating this morning as well. I ask you not to cut off your nose despite your face, I'm asking you not to make the service cuts. It's a big step in the wrong direction. And I might say that for the taxpayers of the city, to the same provincial taxpayers, to the same voters municipally as well as, as provincially, they will blame those making the cuts alongside the McGinty Liberals who have failed to fund transit properly in the last four years. Thank you for your time.